So maybe Kyle Larson isn't getting a waiver. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Thought I'd hop on here at lunchtime on Thursday. Discuss the Kyle Larson waiver because it hasn't been talked about ad nauseum yet. We're turning into ESPN when they want to debate whether or not Dak Prescott's the right right quarterback for the Cowboys or Mike McCarthy's the right coach for the Cowboys or LeBron and the Lakers and this and that. You know how they talk about it for three weeks at a time and every single show talks about the same exact thing. Feels like that's what we're doing right now with this Kyle Larson waiver situation. And it appears it might not be as clear cut as we all kind of assumed it would be. And apparently it's going all all the way to the top. Sounds like Jim France isn't too happy that Kyle Larson, one of the sport's biggest stars, skipped one of the crown jewel events of the season in favor of running the Indianapolis 500. So obviously up until this point, NASCAR has handed out a waiver for literally anything and everything. Breaking your leg while snowboarding, breaking your leg while driving, breaking your back while in a sprint car, breaking your back while in the sand dunes doing your own thing. Being involved in a criminal investigation over the death of a fellow race car driver, got a waiver, getting suspended by NASCAR for a being accused of domestic abuse. He was found not guilty, and those charges were not obviously uh, substan substantiated, so he was cleared and NASCAR reinstated him. Not being old enough to race in NASCAR, skipping the first four races of the year, and then getting hired to run out the completion of the season because the driver that you replaced set a racial slur. That gets you a waiver as well. COVID got you a waiver. You get waivers for everything. Getting suspended by NASCAR for your on-track actions gets a waiver. But now we're having this idiotic discussion about Kyle Larson and whether or not he should get a waiver for helping promote the sport massively over the last two weeks, three weeks, month even. We'll just say month at this point. Tons of people were tuned in to see Kyle Larson run the Indianapolis 500 and Kyle Larson run the Coke 600. NASCAR and the team sold a ton of merch for all of this thing. There was a huge campaign built around Kyle Larson running what they dubbed the Hendrick 1100. And then up until this week, it seemed like, you know, if something happened, NASCAR would probably grant them a waiver. Doesn't seem like that anymore. And apparently this is now where we're going to draw the line in the sand and take a hard line approach to something. It's an evil world we live in. Which is baffling to me, considering this is the same sport that added Jeff Gordon as the 13th driver into the playoffs and refused to penalize the people they actually should have penalized. So, yeah, different regimes. I'll Let me say that. Different regimes, different people running NASCAR at that point. Still the France family, but different people in different positions. Kyle Larson not getting a waiver here would be one of the most idiotic things they could absolutely do. When it comes to NASCAR decisions... 99% of the time, I can sit back and be like, I absolutely understand why they did this. I may like it. I may not like it. But I can always find the rationale in the thinking behind it. And if I can't, I'll talk to somebody over there and try to get the idea on it. I can't. I, I, I can't. At no point, no explanation will be sufficient enough in my brain to bar Kyle Larson from being able to contend for a championship. It makes no sense to me why you would stop one of your most popular drivers from being able to compete for a championship. And now I understand the argument for not granting Kyle Larson a waiver. Let me just say that. I understand what the thought process behind that is. He knowingly decided to not go to Charlotte and race the Coke 600 and instead stayed in Indianapolis to race the Indy 500. Of course, the Indy 500 got delayed by four hours. In that time frame, Kyle Larson could have left, could have bailed on the 500, could have gone to Charlotte and started this race. However, the buildup to the Indianapolis 500, it is the biggest race in the world. There is something about that race and staying that obviously they wanted to do. So they did that and they would have had a much better run without that speeding penalty. So you can argue that, yeah, they had every opportunity to get to Charlotte. But in my brain, my argument is they had every intention of getting to Charlotte. Yes, they wanted to run the Indianapolis 500. They were already there. They were locked in. Go ahead and run that. And then worry about the 600 after. The fact that they flew after the Indianapolis 500 to Charlotte to get in that car to try to finish out the race shows intent, right? They wanted to be there. He wanted to be there. When it comes down to it, Obviously, he didn't start the race. And if that's where we're drawing the line at, I hate this precedent that can possibly be laid out right here. And I hate it for motorsport in general is really what my biggest complaint comes down to. Because if they don't give Kyle Larson a waiver for this, you can kiss any chance of somebody else trying the double goodbye. The Indianapolis 500 might as well move the start time back to 4 o'clock, 4.30 local time and run into prime time like they did this year because it drew a great rating and it took away viewers from NASCAR. So if they want to do that, 
and draw this hard line approach, then yeah, go ahead and do that. And if I'm IndyCar, I answer with, all right, if you're gonna do that, we're gonna start at a much more advantageous time for us. That's not 1245. And we're gonna pick up more viewers in the process. Six and a half million people tuned in at the peak of the IndyCar broadcast on Sunday for the 500. NASCAR got like 3.1 million. So IndyCar got over half, um, you know, over double rather than what NASCAR did at its peak. I, yeah, it's, like I said, mind boggling. It's one of the dumbest debates we've had uh, amongst the fan base, amongst the sport, anybody in the sport. This is one of the dumber ones we've ever had. Yes, Jeff Gordon, the 13th driver getting added. That was a really stupid debate that we had uh, for a while. Every waiver debate, when Chase Elliott broke his leg, dumb waiver debate, went around that as well. At the end of the day, these debates are stupid. And then you have to have all these Reddit threads and they're acting like the time when they thought that Carson Hosevar got his leg amputated and then people are just running around with crazy theories and it's irrational. Everything about it is just dumb at this point. Just give Kyle Larson the waiver. Because if you don't, then what's keeping him from just not showing up the rest of the year? Having one of your most popular drivers on your most popular team get banned from the championship for going and running another race and then showing intent to try to get back to the race that he was supposed to run is really stupid. At the end of the day, he's not a NASCAR employee. He's an employee of Hendrick Motorsports. If you want to do something, penalize Hendrick Motorsports. I actually wouldn't be shocked, working theory in my head. They'll grant him a waiver, but they'll give Kyle Larson a points penalty as a punishment for not starting that race. Because he only went from first to third in the playoffs in the championship standings. He only six points out of first at this point. And I feel like they're viewing that as not a big enough deficit, not a big enough penalty for skipping uh, the Coke 600. So I, in my brain, if they're going to do this, if they're going to grant him a waiver, I wouldn't be shocked to see them also penalize the team uh, for not showing up. I'm interested to see if that's an avenue that they would take. But again, just a working theory in my head. I have not heard anything about that at all. Just give him a waiver. Because obviously there's still an owner's championship to race for if they don't give him a waiver for the driver's championship. But that just kills the motivation, right? Kyle Larson not being able to compete for a championship is robbing the fans of everything, uh, of the chance of seeing the best driver in the sport go out there and win a championship. Hopefully somebody down in Charlotte, down in Daytona, uses some common sense here. And they allow Kyle Larson to get a waiver and continue racing for the championship. But it does appear that there may be some sort of unprecedented approach to this, considering that we have already kind of set a precedent for what happens with waivers. So we'll wait around and find out. But it's now Thursday afternoon, and we still haven't got word about a Kyle Larson waiver yet. And that's kind of uh, slightly troubling at this point. So let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.